above the altimeter, and laser warning and extend gear to the right of the altimeter. You will have to move your point of view to the left to be able to see these last two, otherwise they'll be hidden behind the HUD structure. From here, we move on to the left overhead panel and find our first big cluster of warning and advisory lamps. Reading them from top to bottom and left to right, they are Altitude Hold, Auto Hover, Auto Descent, En Route Nav On, En Route Course, Next Waypoint, Route End, Aircraft Position Calibration Data, Weapons Armed, Cannon, Cannon with a Down Arrow, Crossfeed Valve Open, Turbo Gear, Auxiliary Gear Box Oil Pressure, and Sling Hook Open. Let's move our view to the right and do the same for the right overhead panel. Master Arm On, Weapon Training, HMS Fail, HUD No Ready, Computer Diagnose, Computer Fail, Inverter On, Schwal Fail, Left Hand Engine Anti-Ice, Left Hand Engine Dust Protection, Left Hand Power Set Limit, Rotor Anti-Ice, Right Hand Engine Anti-Ice, Right Hand Engine Dust Protection, Right Hand Power Set Limit, Windshield Heater On, Forward Tank Pump On, Left Hand Valve Closed, Left Hand Outer Tank Pump, Left Hand Inner Tank Pump, Aft Tank Pump On, Right Hand Valve Closed, Right Hand Outer Tank Pump, and Right Hand Inner Tank Pump. Wow, that's a lot of lights. You might be wondering why I am reading each light out. Well, this is a training series. It's important to be familiar with what each light says so that in case of a lamp failure or damage that affects the lamp functionality, you know what warnings are not available and can adapt your operation to that. As you will see, on the faster run through the startup that we will do after this, we won't stop at each light and read it out, but merely check that they are all operational. This assumes that you will have become familiar with each lamp's purpose. We're done with the overhead panel and almost done with our lamps check. Let's move to the wall panel where we start by checking the fire lamps. From left to right, we check that Fire Left Hand Engine, Fire APU, Fire Hydraulics, Fire Right Hand Engine, Fire Gearbox, and 1 and 2 are all functioning. One more area to check and we're through with the lamps test. Let's look at the rear auxiliary panel. There are two lights associated with the hydraulic system and they are right above the hydraulic temperature and pressure indicators. Make sure you can read Main Hydraulic System Valve and Standby Hydraulic System Valve. And with that, we have completed the lamps test. All in all, we made sure that 66 different lamps were functional and we did it in a logical flow that once rehearsed will become routine. So now we're ready to continue with the checklist. Next in line are our fire detection and suppression tests. We should never start our engines without checking the fire detection and suppression unless we don't have time. The reason for it is pretty straightforward if you think about it. We want these systems working in case one or more of our engines and or APU catches on fire during startup or while running. To get the test started, we're going to go to the wall panel and uncap the fire extinguisher work off test switch and then move it to the test position. This will allow us to test both the fire detection loops as well as the fire extinguishing system. Ensure the fire signaling switch is in the warm position. To the right of the fire signaling switch, you will find the sensor group selector switch. The switch allows for testing of all three separate sensor groups, group 1, group 2, and group 3. There is no keyboard shortcut for this, so you will have to use your mouse. This switch is not clickable itself, but its labels are. Click on the GR1 or group 1 label to initiate the test of the first sensor group. A successful test will eliminate the fire left hand engine, fire APU, fire hydraulics, fire right hand engine, fire gearbox lights, as well as the master warning light and the fire warning light on the left forward panel. We now need to reset the test in order to try the next sensor group. For that, move the fire signaling switch to the off position and then back to warn. All lights should go off. Click on the Group 2 label and check for the same lights. 
fire left hand engine, fire APU, fire hydraulics, fire right hand engine, and fire in gearbox, as well as master warning and fire warning lights. Reset the test, and finally click on the group 3. Group 3 will be slightly different in that it has no sensors in the APU compartment. So, no fire APU should light up. But you should still get fire left-hand engine, fire hydraulics, fire right-hand engine, fire gearbox, master warning, and fire warning light. Okay, we're done with the fire tests, so let's reset it once again and move the fire extinguisher work off test switch to the work position to make sure the fire extinguishing system is active and cap it. Now if we have any fires during startup or in flight we know we have a good detection system that will alert us. Okay, let's turn on our intercom again and move back to the rear auxiliary panel where we will do a check of our voice message unit or VMU. This system will be able to give us aura warnings for some failures so we want to have it on prior to attempting a start. Press the Betty voice test labeled push button located right above the hydraulic temperature and pressure indicators and you will hear an oral ECRAN is ready. ECRAN is ready. That's a good test, so let's move on. Another item to do while in the auxiliary panel is our inertial navigation unit, or INU. The INU is a system that senses aircraft motion in all three axes and allows navigation without external signals. It takes some time to align, so let's get it going. First, flip up the INU heat switch to the on position followed by the INU switch to the ON position. The INU aligns automatically, so we can forget about it from now on. We're getting close to starting up the APU, which means we should be talking to Tower to request an engine start clearance. So let's get both of our R800L1 VHF radios on. They're both located on the wall panel and just need to be flipped up to the ON position. VHF1 ON, VHF2 ON. We need to obtain our startup clearance, but remember that we had placed our SPU-9 radio communicator to the ground crew position when we requested external power. So, let's move it to the CA-VHF-2 position, which is the position we'll leave it in for all communications with Wingman and ATC. Now, let's hit backslash and select F6 for tower, then F1 for request engines launch. Your virtual self will make the request over the VHF and Tower will give you the clearance to start while also letting you know the wind velocity which might alter what you do with the rotors during startup. Sakurat 501, request engine start. 501, Mike up, Hanske, cleared for startup, 0 meters per second. If the wind is stronger than 5 meters per second, you will want to add a little cyclic deflection into the wind to help stabilize the helicopter as the rotors spool up. Okay, we're now clear to start, so let's do a visual inspection of the surrounding area around the helicopter to make sure that we're cleared of obstructions to the rotor. Then turn on our rotating beacon, which is an international indication that you are either about to start or already have running engines. We do that on the wall panel by using the switch labeled anti-collision beacon and flip it up. In low visibility conditions such as inclement weather or at night, it is also advised to turn on the navigation lights which can be found on the left overhead panel and or the blade tip lights which are found on the wall panel. Since we're in daylight and good weather conditions, we will not use those. The APU will start consuming jet fuel, so let's turn the fuel gauges on, which is also done by moving a switch on the wall panel, this one labeled fuel quantity. Let's flip it up, and now let's perform a fuel quantity indicator test by pressing the self-test fuel quantity push button next to the fuel gauge, which itself is located on the bottom right of the right forward panel. You are looking for two things during this test. First, that both forward and rear tank lights are working. These are the two small yellow lights inside the fuel quantity gauge. Second is that the needles indicate 110 kilograms more than what you have loaded on board. So make sure you see how much is loaded in each tank. 